into the fifth day. Oh, September. Sunday. talking to an idiot while they're talking about communism. Well, the problem is, is that communism is part of the discussion. It's not the entire thing, but it is part of the discussion. understand the power of the Vatican unless you go back into the Holy Roman Empire. This is where it all begins. A large chunk of the political dynamics that are going on globally have a lot to do with the Holy Roman Empire. And this, is, this involves Prague, this involves uh, Spain, this involves a large chunk of uh, what we call modern day politics uh, sits within the sphere of the Holy Roman Empire. And this is not something that's commonly understood, and Lionel dismisses it. But if you look at Lionel's own thing, you've been watching his stuff, you'll see him vacillate back and forth. He'll change his mind on one thing or another. And this, a lot of many cases, he's getting different indications that things are off. And if you want, you if you want your friends to listen. To really understand what's going on, you want the stuff that Lionel's not talking about, or you have to pay for, or either Alex Jones or any of these people you have to go behind and pay well for. Well, it's all here for free. Tell them to go over here and watch. They don't have to subscribe, they don't have to like, they just love looking at the viewership. As long as the viewership goes up, I'm happy. <laughs> but the thing is, is that it's not about necessarily about the viewership because information does get out. Yeah, I see it do. It slowly disseminates. And people either accept it or dismiss it. And it's up to you. But the thing is, a lot of times I find in hindsight people will dismiss things and then come back to it again later on realizing, oh, wait a minute, I shouldn't have this. I said, I shouldn't have simply dismissed this. As I said before, you have to consider a lot of different points of view. And a lot of times the other points of view will not come into a full understanding. You will not understand it until much later on, even a couple of years later, you may not have any significance. But it might be that important piece that those sort of say, whoa, ah, when you get something new, and you, you've worked on it long enough, ah, now I understand how this is important, or how it interconnects, where, initially, where you didn't necessarily have that understanding before.
and though I am as is that Nosies is something that really shouldn't be dismissed because of the number of factors that are involved in it. And the thing is, is that the, this is kind of what we're dealing with here, is that Nosies was not uh, was not dismissed by Newton, Leibniz, or Plum. And yet these are the key people who are who, who are at the core of what's happening today. It's the collapse of humanism. Why is the humanist, the humanist world disappearing? And remember before, like any theory, any theory, any idea, any ism, it has multiple versions of it. See, the communism has multiple versions. It really depends on who you're talking to that, 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 that you'll understand the different versions there. So you have to go into it. When you say communism, well, what, what do you mean by communism? What specifically are you talking about? You're talking about Mao, you're talking about uh, Lenin, you're talking about Trotsky, you're talking about Tolstoy, you're talking about, you know, you know about Stalin, Pol Pot, uh, Castro, Che Guevara, these were, their, their versions of communism was all, were all different. These are the spectrums. And you have to understand, the, the, they were di different, you have, but you also have to understand how they have a commonality under communism as well. And of course, communism is part of socialism. As is national socialism, the Nazis. That is national socialists. Two different perspectives on socialism. And we have this in culture with us, the nationalists. They're, your, they're the people who, who are eugenics. They're about genetics. Your genes. You ever seen Spider-Man? X-Men? The Hulk? Well, that's all genetics. That this is what they were talking about. They all have these roots in national social. This is the same thing with the superheroes. And then, of course, you have people like Spider-Man, Wonder Woman, Thor. These are your Gnostics. These are the these are the mystics. These are the uh, you know. Religion, religious sex. Well, the thing is, you can be religious about your military, you can be religious about a lot of things. It just really depends on what you believe. Religion isn't what you believe. Religion is why you do what you do. And, no, I should say, religion is. Pardon me on that one. That one. Religion, religion is what you do. Why you do what you do is either gnosis or theology. What you believe. Theology is what you believe. Within our culture, it's within everywhere that you actually you actually have Nazis in there, and you have the National Socialists. You have socialism within the, within the comic. With I mean, Gene uh, Gene Roddenberry's Star Trek, uh, Star Wars, was all about socialism, socialist utopia. So to go around and simply dismiss socialism and uh, communism and na na, you know, national socialism you know, is kind of a foolish thing to do because there's so much history there. And I'm not. And I think it's, but then again, this is uh, coming from a guy like you know, Lionel always says, you know, history would be a wonderful thing if uh, only we were, were real. And this was coming from this is a quote from Tolstoy, uh, but he doesn't give you that. He actually doesn't give you the reference where it comes from. But anyways, that's uh, neither here nor there. And this is how you do the analysis. This is how you, you go beyond what, what is initially said. He says, well, well, most of you don't do the research maybe beyond anything beyond. Well, yeah, that's true. Uh, <laughs> you're getting the uh, view from here. You're getting the view beyond here. 
I, I do a lot of deep research, so you can hear a lot of it here, but at the same time, if you really do want to understand things, you're going to have to do your own research. You're going to have to do your own study. But an intellectual considers himself to be at a point beyond others, that others don't understand them. And so he considers everybody else to be children. Where a person who is doing an open research, nobody is beneath, nobody is, uh, beneath you. We're not going to do a lot of things and think we want more details of my piece. <laughs> um, basically, most of the countries in Europe still have their monarch in some form or another. The royal families are still there. They still, they're still factors in um, the environment. Again, it's a Gnostic thing. It was a religious thing. It was to send people here to the colonies um, who were undesirable. And these were the Quakers, the Shakers, the Puritans, and other people who broke off from there. Now, see, the Gnostics could hide anywhere because they hid within the churches. And some of them, you know, who were of Jewish descent hid within the synagogues. So there was no need for them because these societies, societies were secret. They were bound to secrecy in terms of what they spoke of, in terms of their meaning and so forth. So everyone was thinking that they, they're going to church. And they referred to themselves as a church. And you see that all of Washington, D.C. was completely set up uh, according to Masonic design. Now, let's see, the, the thing is, the Masons, ma Masonry is not a religion. <laughs> I think if you say, oh, yes, they're Masonic, that's the religion. Well, no, it's not. Mm. Masonry is not the religion. A large chunk of these Gnostic groups well, the majority of them, in addition to hiding themselves within the church, they hid themselves in guilds. In other words, as a matter of fact, they took over the guilds. 
And so the reason why you have the Masons is because they were inside of the uh, Masonic Guild that build houses with brick. They, they, they were castle builders. Castles, your churches, anything was built with stone or used stone those were the stone masons. And uh, the Gnostics were inside of that uh, uh, guild. They ran it. They, they were the nice Templar. And this is the way it is today. The, 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 the unions today are still pretty much connected to, to the Masonic traditions because they are Masonic themselves. Because this is how these Gnostic understandings work, is that they work within these so-called the arcane arts. And so they're, 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 they're there with us pretty much today. They're in the banking system. The banking system, your entire monetary system. The reason why you have the all-seeing eye, the triangle. Um, you have the owl, which is the god of Moloch. These aren't there for fun or to show Masonic power. They're there as part of ritual. This is part of Masonic ritual. They, this is how they this is how they work. pretty much with us today. You know, every time you use a dollar, every time you spend some money, uh, there is a mis there is a Gnostic ritual that is with us. They're there at the monarchy. They're there in the monarchy. They're there at the papacy. And do you think today that the, pap the Pope does not have any power? Yes, again, the Pope has an enormous amount of political influence in the world. As a matter of fact, he is involved in much of the political goings on. You cannot, you cannot talk about geopolitics and the events of geopolitics without talking about the papacy. The papacy is fully involved, fully informed, uh, and is the Gnostic sort of face within the within the Roman Catholic Church. He's and then it's him, the papacy, who set up these Masonic powers. A larger the church, the, the Roman Catholic Church itself, was indeed Gnostic. It set up the traditions, the, the Gnostic, 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 the Gnostic traditions, and it created Europe. Europe was created. And based on Gnostic understanding, on Gnostic tradition, they simply used the Christian faith. You use the Christian faith to hide itself, just the way they did within Judaica. They hid themselves within, within the, well, the so-called so Jews. Now this could be argued, but the thing is, this is one of the results. something. Everything seems to be okay. Yeah, it's okay. Everything's okay. Oh, okay. I see what's going on. Uh, my, part of my side lights fell off. <laughs> what's going on? I gotta fix those up when I get home. I knew something was going on, but anyways, not much you can do about it now. I gotta get home before it rains. It's starting to rain, but anyways. So you have your Gnostic tradition there, you have your Gnostics still involved in much of the political goings on. Uh, this is the same thing, this is true for Germany. He still the, the Black Knights and the Malta are still around.
the the goings on in Spain are all filled with the, the, the Nostra uh, understandings and traditions. It's just simply not talked about. See, these, the Gnostic stuff is, in many cases, uh, core, central to the shadow government. When, when Lionel talks about the shadow government, he's talking about Gnosticism. Although he doesn't necessarily realize it. Sorry, buddy. Just went through a light. <laughs> There's some waiting there. But I couldn't stop. I was going too fast. The thing is, Lionel doesn't realize this. Then again, that's what we talked about in his newsletter about giving up ancient traditions ancient thoughts on it, that this is something brand new. And this is not something that's brand new. It's a transition. It's an ending of the humanist period and a move into the Gnostic period. Humanism is at an end. The intellectual sphere is at an end. This is what's going on. This is the reality of, of what's occurring today. back to my place. But again, an intellectual is not, has, has his mind closed to anything but his own sense of self. It is a completely selfish existence in which the self is the most important thing their mind is encompassing all, and that's the way they see things. They can never, they cannot actually stand outside themselves. And this is why you see Lionel the way he is. But he's going to continue to be buffeted. He's going to continue to be bounced around. <laughs> 